The following report contains some disturbing images. Treating the injured from the alleged chemical attack in the Damascus suburbs. Adults and children. Frantic medical workers. Still unverified, but this new footage is from a Syrian filmmaker. And more tales of what exactly happened in the small hours of Wednesday morning. My father, mother, all my sisters and brothers, plus at least 50 neighbours collapsed on the floor. I managed to bring my little sisters and two other girls to this field hospital. But nothing is left in Zamalka. We even saw cars hitting walls because the drivers lost consciousness as they tried to transport the victims for treatment. And still no answer to the crucial questions. Who did this? And was it really chemical weapons? In Washington, President Obama urged the Assad government to let UN inspectors in to investigate, still weighing his language carefully. But at the Foreign Office in London, William Haig, for the first time, directly blamed the Syrian government. I know that some people in the world would like to say this is some kind of conspiracy brought about by the opposition in Syria. I think the chances of that are vanishingly small. And so we do believe uh, that this is a chemical attack by the Assad regime uh, on a large scale. But we would like the United Nations to be able to assess that. Strong language from William Haig. And he's not the only one. Yesterday, Turkey declared that all red lines have now been crossed and France warned that force may be needed. Compare that to President Obama calling the attack a big event of grave concern, but also assessing it as merely troublesome. So why is the American president weighing his words so carefully? Well, because once he gives the US verdict, he faces a quandary. Does he hold back from action, tantamount to inviting more chemical attacks? Or does he order the use of force, potentially making the crisis in Syria even deeper? In Moscow, the Russians lashed out at the West today for what they called a wave of anti-Syrian propaganda. And having first signalled a willingness to collaborate over a UN investigation, they blamed rebel fighters for making the area where the attack took place too unsafe for UN inspectors to visit. But at a press conference in Istanbul this afternoon, the main Syrian opposition coalition was swift to deny that. We've issued a statement uh, committing to the safety and security of the UN inspectors. We guarantee their safety and security. We want them to come in. We want them to investigate. We want the evidence to show. And we will do whatever it takes to protect them. But the days are passing, and the worry is crucial evidence on rockets like this one, apparently found in the vicinity, may deteriorate, leaving UN inspectors nothing to look through but ruins and rubble. Bridget Kendall, BBC News.